Hello and welcome to another video. This is Jennifer McGuire. So today I am sharing some fun puzzle card designs. This is a great way to make a unique card. It comes in pieces, so the recipient puts it together to reveal a message. And I'll show you some fun products that you can use to make puzzle cards, but also how you can do them with supplies you already have. Along with these puzzle cards today, I'm going to throw in a little bit of create or crafty therapy chat. See, today's video is part of a blog hop to support the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So I thought I would talk a little bit about crafty therapy in today's video, and I'll be using this new stamp set. This is called the I Care stamp set. Perky Penny Paper Arts and Simon Says Stamp have released this set and 100% of the profits from it go to support the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. This stamp set has beautiful encouragement messages that be can be used for just about anyone in your life, loved ones, strangers, friends, anyone. I thought it'd be fun to do encouraging messages on some puzzle cards, and I'm going to give some of these cards to friends and family, and I'm going to give some to include in these little pouches that I plan to take to a homeless shelter. I don't think there's a soul out there who wouldn't love to get a card with these messages on them. I also like that the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline phone number is on here in a stamp, so you could stamp that on little messages that you leave around. I think it's an important message to get across. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about crafty therapy in a moment. However, let's get started with the cards. I'm using new products from Pink and Main. So in the middle is the Pink and Main Puzzle Die. It cuts a puzzle that is four and a quarter by five and a half. On the left is a small heart puzzle die. And then on the right is a stamp set that goes along with it. And I'll use the love you to pieces sentiment on that. And the puzzle border stamp on the envelopes. Again, if you don't have these products, I'll show how you can create puzzles on your own. When making puzzle cards, I recommend using a very heavyweight cardstock. I'm using Nina Classic Crest 110 pound solar white cardstock. This is heavy, a very heavy cardstock, heavier than you can get at most office supply stores. I decided to use my Misty stamping tool since I'm making multiple cards, and I'm going to stamp the Simon Says Stamp You Matter background stamp with white ink onto white cardstock. This You Matter background stamp is one of my favorites and I've used it a lot lately in videos because there are encouraging messages in this background, which goes along with the themes of today's cards. I'm stamping with Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. You will not see this, but when we stamp on top of this with dye ink, the white pigment ink will somewhat resist the ink and show through. This is a very subtle look. You could skip it if you want to, but I thought it added a little interest to our backgrounds. So I'm stamping several pieces and I will heat set them so they dry completely. Okay, so I'll take one of those four and a quarter by five and a half inch stamped backgrounds and put it into my Misty stamping tool, along with one of the large heart stamps from the I Care stamp set. I've positioned my paper right up against the corner and I have my stamp in place. I'm going to stamp this repeatedly in a row with a, uh, with a dye ink. Any dye ink would work here. I happen to be using Butter Bar, which is a nice yellow color from Hero Arts. I stamped it once, and then I'm shifting my paper up to the one inch mark. You see over there on the left? So I started at zero, now I'm at one inch. I've cleaned my stamp, and I'll stamp again. Then I'll move to the two inch mark and do the same. Now the reason I'm cleaning my stamp off is remember there's pigment ink stamped on the background. And a little of that pigment ink transfers onto the stamp when we stamp with it. So just wiping it off with the dry cloth is fine. So here you can see how I can perfectly stamp all of these hearts in a row by just shifting the paper an inch each time. So now I've moved my heart down a little bit and I'm stamping with Sweet Mango ink from Gina K Designs. I start at the zero mark, move to the one inch, stamp again, move to the two inch and stamp again. Using your stamping tool like this, where you look at the measurements on the side, is a great way to stamp a repeated background. If you have a large background stamp, you could do that too. But by taking a small image and stamping it repeatedly, you can get beautiful colors like you see here. Now right on top of this, I'm stamping with VersaFine Black Ink, the message that says you make this world beautiful. It's from that I Care stamp set. 
I like that the words are separate in that stamp set so you can change up the message depending on who you want to give it to. This particular one's going to my daughter. Now if you look closely, you can see the white text that we stamped in the background showing through the hearts, which adds a fun layered look. I'm using the pink and main puzzle background die to cut from a piece of Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock. That piece will be five and a half by four and a quarter. Now I'm taking our stamped panel, which I trimmed to be four by five and a half, and I'm cutting that with the pink and main puzzle by die too. I'm actually die cutting it upside down just so I could make sure that my paper was centered on the die. So now I have these two pieces cut with the puzzle. Now on this one, I decided I wanted to double up the cardstock. So I'm using my Gina K Connect glue to glue the stamped uh, die cut puzzle pieces onto the solid blue die cut puzzle pieces. This just makes each puzzle piece thicker. It does take more time, you are right, <laughs> it does, but I wanted this to be thick enough that it easily could be assembled by my daughter. You don't have to do this. You could just go with the piece on the left and be done. Or you could have covered the back of your stamped piece with maybe like stick it adhesive and then die cut it so that the adhesive is already on the back of each piece. I just didn't think about it at the time. However, if you glue both of these two layers together and then die cut it, I don't think the die will cut through both layers. So I found this was to be my best option, but again, you could have put double-sided tape on the back of your stamp panel before you die cut it so the adhesive would already be there. But this really only took me about 10 minutes to do. So now that I have the blue pieces glued to the back of our stamped pieces, I can assemble it so you can see what it looks like assembled. I do like providing a border on the edge. That's why I have the teal showing through on the sides because it helps the person know where the border pieces are on the puzzle. And then you can always flip it over and write whatever message you want to on the back. Lila is really going to enjoy doing this. And a little bit later in this video, I'll show you how I put it into little envelopes so I can give it to the person. So for this card, I did layer it up, so it took a little extra time but I wanted to show you that you can make a one layered puzzle card. And that's what I did with this example here. I again am using a very heavy weight white cardstock and I'm stamping the Simon Says Stamp You Matter To Me background stamp, but this time with fog ink. This is a light gray ink that's great for stamping backgrounds with a very soft look. Now on this, I'm going to stamp the three hearts that are in the I Care stamp set just going to stamp it repeatedly in a rainbow of colors. Now I put these stamps into my Misty stamping tool, but you could definitely do this quickly with an acrylic block. But I am stamping the three hearts each time in a different color, moving it around randomly. When I'm creating a random background like this, I do like to make sure that some of my images overlap. And I really like the look of the colors on that gray stamped background. I wanted to create a border on this piece, but not layer it. So instead, I have a piece of masking tape down, and I'm using a super dark gray marker to draw a line on the edge. You could also use an inking tool here if you want. That way it looks like it's matted, and you know where the border of the puzzle is. However, it's only one layer. I stamp some sentiments into the center using that I Care stamp set, and then I have a fun puzzle card. I can write a message on the back if I want to. My daughter Lila and I like to go through the drive through at McDonald's and buy a bottle of water simply so we can pay for the person behind us in line. It's just a way to teach kindness to my little one. And I think this would be a fun card to pass along when we do that. You don't have to put your name on it, just give it to someone and I think it would be very encouraging. Okay, my next puzzle card example is another one that could be good to give to just about anyone. But instead of talking my way through the card, I'll just let you watch it. It's pretty easy to figure out. And I wanted to talk a few moments about crafty therapy. Since the I Care stamp set today is uh, to support the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, I thought I would take a moment to talk about how crafting is a great form of therapy for many of us out there. I will say that a majority of the emails that I receive from readers or cards that I get from viewers are about how they are thankful that I create these videos because crafting is a form of therapy for them. Many people talk about their struggles with depression or anxiety or loss of a loved one or getting through tough times. 
and how creating is a way for them to get relief and comfort. And I wanted to share that because I think a lot of people feel that they're alone in that, that they're out there crafting by themselves, looking this, at this as kind of a form of therapy, but nobody else is feeling that way. But I think that is completely wrong. I think a lot of us look to crafting as a way to just find some relief and some comfort. Now, I have always been very open about my own personal struggles with depression and anxiety. If you follow me on Instagram, it's something that I'm very open about. The reason I'm open about it is because I think the best thing that we can do for each other is to help each other feel less alone. And by sharing our struggles, we can help each other and feel less alone. Now, I know there are people who struggle much more than I do, and that's why we're doing this hop today to support the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So on my blog, which I will link to at the end of this video, I will have information where you can get help or you can provide help to others. I'll go ahead and continue on with a few other examples. In this case, I use the Pink and Main Heart Puzzle Die. So I stamped a background and I'm tracing the die onto the paper so I know where to add stamping. Now this particular little heart-shaped puzzle, I plan to make a bunch of these with my kids that we can include in those little homeless bags I was telling you about earlier. But it's also something that you could just give out pretty much anywhere. You could give these to people, as I mentioned, in a drive-thru. You can give these to waitresses. You could give these to teachers. I think anybody would appreciate that little lift in spirits. Now, now that I've mentioned how many of us find crafting as a form of therapy or a way of dealing with depression or anxiety, remember that crafting can also be used to help other people. So if you know someone who's going through struggles or um, has these challenges, send them a card. Cards are a great way to reach out to someone because they can revisit that card over and over again as a reminder that they're not alone. So when I'm having one of those days where I'm really struggling with my depression or my, my anxiety, I'll sit down and make a card. I find that the creating is wonderful, but knowing that the card will make somebody else feel better makes me feel a lot better and helps me get through. So if you're out there using your card making as a way to kind of get through the day, know that you're not alone. A lot of us are the same way and it's all going to be okay. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on here. You can see I did some layering with the three hearts included in that I Care stamp set. So here I did light pink, dark pink, and then some white ink on top of that. Creates a fun layered look. I then stamped You Are Loved from the I Care stamp set. And then I'll use the Puzzle Heart die from Pink and Main to cut that out. And look how easy that is. You could even simplify this more by using maybe uh, a background stamp with just the sentiment or layering background stamps. It's really fun to do, and the puzzle heart is a little bit smaller, so it's faster to put together. Okay, now I promised I would show how to make a puzzle card if you don't have puzzle dies. I used to do these in the past, and it works just as well. Now in this case, I have one of those backgrounds that we made at the beginning of the video, where I stamped that background You Matter to Me stamp with white pigment ink onto white cardstock. Well, I'm using another one of those here, and I have a My Favorite Things hearts stencil over that background. And in the hearts, I'm putting different colors of Distress ink. You can see that the white stamping shows through some of that ink, just adds a little bit of interest. I'm also stamping a sentiment from that You Care stamp set. And then I'll trim this into random shapes. And that's how I form the puzzle pieces from this one. I'm just cutting in random little lines here. Then I will take each of those strips and cut them into smaller pieces. Now I don't cut too small or it'll be a little bit frustrating of a puzzle, but this really does work well. Now on this one, I didn't draw a border for my piece and I kind of wish I had. I think it would make it a lot easier if I would have taken a marker or inking tool and done the line around the four sides. So I do recommend doing that because it makes it easier for the puzzle to be put together. But I was able to do this one and actually gave it to my brother too, and he thought it went together well. So now we have our little puzzle pieces created without the die. 
Okay, so I promised I would show you how I package these little puzzle pieces to give to a recipient. I actually had some glassine envelopes in my stash, and they're really just little mini envelopes that you can see through. You could use any small envelope for this or even a little baggie. I die cut some hearts from matching cardstock. I stamped a solid heart in the center and then white heat embossed the love you to pieces sentiment. That sentiment is from that pink and main puzzle stamp set that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now you could either give the recipient this little envelope as is with the pieces inside, or you can put this into a regular envelope to mail it. So for some, I will do a regular mailing envelope or just to make it kind of hidden that there's a puzzle inside. So on this one, I'm putting the little puzzle pieces in and I'm putting a strip of some Happy Hearts washi tape across it. Any washi tape would work here or a little sticker. And there you could give this to the recipient or you could include that in the larger envelope. Now, if you are using a larger envelope, I would recommend using that puzzle border stamp that's in that pink and main puzzle stamp set to stamp across the, the envelope just so it matches nicely. And I also added the small heart from the I Care stamp set. Now I link all the supplies for these puzzle cards below in my YouTube description. I really encourage you to go and check out the I Care stamp set. Again, 100% of the profits of this go to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. I'll provide links for all of this below too. And I appreciate you listening to that little crafty therapy talk there in the middle. You know, I'm here for many of the same reasons you are. So I'm glad that we can all come together in this fun, crafty community. And I'm thankful to be a part of it. Now, in the middle today, I'm going to link to something different. First is the link to a YouTuber that I find very encouraging to me as a mom. And you might also. And then the other link is to a video that I am really liking lately. I'm listening to it over and over again, and I'm hoping you find it encouraging too. Have a great day. We'll see you again soon, and take care.